Today, we're going to be talking about the propeller nut on this 9.5 horsepower Evinrude. This is the after work garage. So I've actually been using this motor a little bit. Uh, and a while back, I took it down to the White River in Arkansas to do some trout fishing. And I threw it on a little aluminum boat I have down there and motored up river. And uh, when I got to where I wanted to be, I clicked it in reverse to uh, maneuver around a little bit. And when I did that, the rev spiked up uh, and I lost power. So I was thinking, all right, we might have a problem here. Uh, so I clicked it back into forward. And sure enough, there was no power, the engine would rev up, but I wasn't going anywhere. So lifted the motor up and took a look, and the propeller and prop nut had left the building. So obviously, when I clicked it in reverse, um, the propeller spun itself back off the propeller shaft, um, which is interesting because I'd actually had the motor in reverse a number of times that day, uh, getting it off the boat trailer, and then again getting it off the shore after I'd um, you know, gotten off the boat, parked my truck, and then came back. Uh, but I'm thinking, since the nose cone that I had on there was quite old, it looked like it was either original to the motor, or at least had been used for quite a long time without being replaced, uh, that the threading in there had either stripped out or wasn't in very good condition, and the only thing holding it on when I put it in reverse was the cotter pin, which was kind of dinky. And when I got upriver, by the time I had put it in reverse a number of times, um, the cotter pin probably sheared off or the plastic piece of the nose cone broke off at that point and allowed the propeller to spin back off. So obviously I didn't get a ton of fishing done that day, uh, but it is a good tip that if you're not particularly confident in a motor you have and you don't have a backup motor on like I did when I was initially testing this thing, oh, listen to that. And you're in a river uh, to start by motoring upriver. That way, if you have any sort of mechanical problems or you lose a prop like I did, uh, then you can easily drift back down and paddle your way to the boat ramp. Um, because, especially in a faster flowing river like the White River, there's no way I was going to paddle back upstream to a boat ramp, so I'd have to beach it somewhere and find a way to get back to it. That brings up another point on paddles, uh, which are an essential piece of safety gear that you're actually required to have on boats. Um, and I've always thought, you know, on a big bass boat or something, it doesn't make much sense. I don't see how a paddle is going to help me out. But if you, you lose your main source of propulsion, um, you realize you're really stranded. And if you don't have a paddle, there's uh, really not much you can do other than float around at the mercy of the wind and the water. Um, and this actually is not the first time I've had to paddle a boat around. They've all usually been smaller, lighter boats. But um, you can actually move a fair-sized boat um, pretty efficiently uh, just by paddling. So it's always good to have one on board. If you look at the schematic for the arrangement of the propeller and prop nut on the 9.5 Evinrude Sport Twin, you can see you have the propeller here. Uh, 48 is a shear pin that holds the propeller uh, to the prop shaft, and that will shear if you hit something, theoretically shear if you hit something really hard with the propeller to try to save the gear case. And up here, number 49, is the nose cone that acts as a prop nut, and this is uh, held in place by the threading on the drive shaft here, but also um, by a cotter pin there that just prevents it from uh, spinning off. I've pulled up a website selling new old stock of these propeller cone slash uh, prop nuts, and the issue I take with these is not only are they somewhat expensive for a prop nut, um, but they're all plastic including the threading. So this means that they're susceptible to stripping out the threading really easily if you over tighten the nut. And those are uh, fine threads. It's, I believe it's a uh, 20 threads per inch, which is a fine, the standard fine threading. Uh, so they're really rather susceptible to uh, stripping out. They're not that deep. And this in fact is what happened to me. So I wasn't really inclined to put another one of these on my boat motor in addition to the fact that I just didn't want, quite want to spend the money on just a little plastic piece that didn't last me all that long last time. If we look at the shaft here, uh, this is just a half inch shaft with 20 threads per inch, which is a fine, a US standard fine threading here. This hole is for a cotter pin, and what I've done is drilled holes, a corresponding hole in the nut that I'm going to be putting on there, 
Uh, and that's just a 3 sixteenths drill bit I used to do that. Drilling out the soon to be prop nut is pretty straightforward. I just stuck a one half inch fine threaded nut in a vise. And yeah, I know my vise isn't connected to anything. I don't have a workbench yet, but maybe once the garage finds a permanent home, I'll make one. Anyways, I chose to do this drilling in two steps. I used a smaller drill bit, sort of as a pilot hole, so that I could make sure the holes were as straight and aligned as possible. And then I stepped it up to the final 3 16 inch diameter and drilled that through. You probably could have done it in one step. It's not a very big hole, but anyways, here's the finished product, as you can see. So let's go ahead and pop our propeller on. So our pin's in place. And what I'm going to do is throw a washer on here. And here's the nut that we made that I just drilled a 3 16 hole in. This is just a half inch nut. Let's go ahead and put this guy on. Tighten it down and see where that hole lines up. Kind of hard to do one handed. Give me just a sec here. And there we go. Now we can go ahead and slip our cotter pin through there. And we have a prop nut. I think that's going to do nicely. So I know that was a quick repair, but for me, it was a necessary one. And for only a couple dollars worth of parts, it definitely saved me money over buying one of those stock nose cones, and I think it's actually going to be more secure. It's also a reminder that sometimes um, when you don't have the part or you don't want to shell out the money for it, you can uh, look into fabricating your own. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will catch you next time on the After Work Garage.